Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this beautiful object right here. The so-called loneliest galaxy in the universe. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So there are quite a lot of various types of galaxies out there and there are a lot of different combinations of galaxies or so-called galactic clusters. As you might know from some of the previous videos, our galaxy is part of what's known as the local group. There are about 54 to possibly 60 different galaxies that we've already discovered here and this number is going to be growing larger and larger as our telescopes get better and better. There is also um, a much larger structure that we're part of. These are called um, galactic clusters and superclusters, but this is something I've covered in one of the previous topics. Today, though, we're talking about something a little bit different, and this actually relates to something many of you have been requesting for a very long time. And the topic that was most requested by many people is actually something known as the Butes Void which is this really large empty space in the middle of the universe, not so far away in terms of um, cosmic terms, of course, from where we are located. But one of the reasons I never really wanted to talk about this particular void is, well, you can kind of see the reasons on the map here. There are many different voids out there. Nothing really makes Buddha's void any special. Yeah, it's a little bit larger, but a much more interesting object is actually closer to our own supercluster, um, closer to home. There's another void known as the local void that's basically right at our doorsteps and I've talked very thoroughly about this in one of the previous videos that should be popping up somewhere near the end of this video. So voids are pretty much everywhere. They're very common, they're also somewhat mysterious because for the most part it's like there's nothing there. Because by definition a void is just emptiness. Now it's not truly empty, uh, there's still a little bit of matter inside, but it's nothing compared to what we find in galaxies. Here you would find maybe one single atom in every cubic meter of space, and that's almost nothing. And so these various voids are very interesting for us to try to figure out how the universe formed and what exactly happened in order for the universe to actually form these unusual, I guess you can call them bubbles of empty space. But to make things a lot more mysterious, this is when galaxies like this come in, because it just so happens we've discovered that there are quite a lot of so-called void galaxies out there. Basically galaxies being formed or existing essentially in the middle of these empty spaces where nothing else should really exist. And even though to some extent we can explain how these voids form, we have trouble explaining how some of these galaxies, like this one right here, can possibly exist and form as well. So some of the more popular void galaxies are the so-called Pisces A that you see right here on the screen, Pisces B, which is this right here, and lastly NGC 7077. All three of these galaxies are in the local void and they're basically kind of just there by themselves. And in some sense you could refer to them as these lonely galaxies that have no uh, other galaxies that they're connected to. And there are obviously a lot more other galaxies that we've discovered in the Butes Void as well, because it's much larger than the local void. But this here, with a difficult name MCJ plus 01-02-015, uh, takes the cake. It's literally the loneliest galaxy to date. The actual distance between this galaxy and everything else around it is roughly around 100 million light years. Okay, just to give you a bit of a comparison, the closest large galaxy to us, the Andromeda galaxy, is about 2.5 uh, million light years away from us. And if this is the Milky Way, the Andromeda galaxy, if you were to look at it in the night skies, would look something like this. So you can kind of see it right there. It's a little bit small, but still visible. This is two and a half million light years. Now imagine that, but obviously much larger. Basically multiply this by 40. That's the distance between this galaxy and the nearest object to it. And there seems to be nothing else in the vicinity. Now obviously some people might say, well what about these other galaxies you see and all these stars here? Well that's just a perspective. These three stars that you see, one, two, and three, these are in our own galaxy. They're basically just in front of the picture. Everything else here is way, way, way behind. It's just because we use a very powerful telescope, we were able to see them. 
but if you were to essentially stand in the middle of this galaxy on a typical planet, and if you were to then look into the night skies and try to see what's around you, you would obviously see other stars, but you would not see a single galaxy, unless you had a really, really powerful telescope. As a matter of fact, when NASA released the original image for this uh, galaxy, they even suggested that, hypothetically, if there is an intelligent life somewhere in this galaxy, well, kind of like similar to um, humans, I guess, they would not know about the existence of galaxies as a concept until um, equivalent of about 1960s, when we were able to create much more powerful telescopes. So in other words, a typical um, life here that's able to kind of look into the um, rest of the universe would not know galaxies are even a thing. And this really makes you wonder, because we know that the universe expands and a lot of things are already invisible to us, could there have been some other concept that has disappeared in the last 13 billion years that used to exist in previous years? And this also makes you wonder, what is it going to be like for the life in the future of our planet, basically in the next few billions of years? Now in one of the previous videos where I imagine what it's going to be like in about 1 trillion years, we've established that, well, that's when all of the galaxies will actually disappear from our view and we're not going to know about their existence anymore. So in that sense, any future life that is going to be created in the Milky Way galaxy is not going to be aware that other galaxies have ever existed. And that's a little bit mind-blowing. But let's go back to the void galaxies and specifically this one right here. How could such a galaxy form or exist? Because we know that all major galaxies today form as a result of a collision and normally in these uh, relatively large clusters. I mean, there are a lot of signs um, from our own galaxy suggesting that many collisions occurred in order for Milky Way to be made. Well, it seems that the void galaxies are um, possibly formed as a result of two things. And to try to explain this, I'm going to use uh, this simulation right here that shows you the so-called galactic filaments. Now, galaxies stretch across the galactic filaments, and in some sense, the galaxies are actually stuck to it, and the filament itself can even um, affect the behavior of a typical galaxy, affecting its spin, for example. But as the universe expands and as it grows in size, the filament gets stretched, and the voids between the filament actually expand as well. So all of these voids will grow larger and larger in size. But once in a while, some of these galaxies might accidentally kind of get lost in between the filament and in some sense end up being stranded inside of these voids for the rest of their existence because they're not attached to major filaments anymore. So in other words, it's the result of the expansion of the universe and some of these galaxies that are very loosely attached to the filament getting lost in between. And so, once this galaxy gets lost, it sort of stays there in the middle of empty space, completely untouched by everything else. And in that sense, it presents a really good opportunity for us to study what happens to galaxies when they have no interaction with anything else and no collisions. At the same time, some of these void galaxies could also have been formed entirely from the material that may have been left behind in the void itself. So, they might get extra mass from this pristine material from the beginning of the universe itself. So there's a lot of opportunity for us to study what the universe was probably like about 13 billion years ago. In other words, this is untouched material completely isolated from anything else. We've also realized over the years that in some cases, um, inside of these voids, there's enough material left over that can even form its own tiny versions of galactic clusters that then start interacting. And they also have their own miniature connections. They're not really as big and as thick as the galactic filament that um, is everywhere in the universe, but it's still there. We actually refer to this as a kind of a void filament. Basically, these very thin connections that go in between void galaxies and even connect to the major filament nearby. But there's a major difference between a typical galactic filament and the void filament. And the main difference is that it's much straighter because there is very little material nearby to make it kind of fold and bend. In other words, everything here, due to the emptiness of space, is unaffected by gravity and is in more or less untouched conditions. So, if we were wanted to study what happened in the beginning of the universe, this is the place to kind of study it. This is where you would find some of the most original materials in the universe. 
Now, there's actually a lot more interesting things about this galaxy that I haven't mentioned. One of them, for example, is that unlike other similar galaxies, it also seems to be a spiral galaxy and even very similar to the Milky Way, a barred spiral galaxy. It has a bar right here. This suggests a really interesting formation history and right now it's very difficult for us to explain how something like this could actually be created completely remotely from everything else. At a distance of about 293 million light years away from us, it's definitely in a completely different void from everything else. It's not in the Buddha's void or local void. And because it's relatively comparable in size to the Milky Way, the biggest mystery here is how such a galaxy could form isolated from everything else, especially because we believe that a typical bar galaxy would be formed from a major collision with other galaxies. So this here is probably one of the biggest mysteries out there, and just the fact that it's such an isolated galaxy already presents itself with a lot of opportunities for us to discover a lot of things about the universe. Now in some sense, other than being a very lonely galaxy, or basically the loneliest galaxy discovered so far, there's very little else to say about this right now, we just don't know much about it. But I'm sure um, as this galaxy becomes a much more popular source of uh, various studies, we're going to discover a lot of absolutely incredible things about this unusual object. And most importantly, by studying this galaxy, we'll be able to finally figure out how these voids form, what happens inside of these voids, and how galaxies can actually exist in the middle of them. But in case you were wondering, because this is actually the loneliest galaxy in the universe, it's going to stay this way for the rest of the universe. Since the universe is expanding and since the closest galaxy to it is about 100 million light years away, it's not going to ever experience any collisions, it's never going to experience anything else, it's just going to stay like this for the rest of its existence. And in some sense, it's kind of interesting, kind of sad, but also really intriguing. I'm sure a lot of scientists would like to find out one day how exactly this will evolve and what this will turn into a few billion years from now. Now I'm sure in the future we'll discover more um, void galaxies and possibly some that are even stranger than this one, but for now this is definitely the most mysterious, most lonely and most unusual galaxy out there. I personally would love to give this some sort of a cool name, so if you have a suggestion for what we could call this, leave it in the comments below. But anyway, until we learn something else about this unusual galaxy and until we discover something else mysterious, that's really it. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it actually does help me quite a lot.